Hey folks, uh, this is the central limit theorem. So this is an important part about statistics, um, section 5.4 in our elementary statistics book. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. So uh, the central limit theorem says this, you guys. So far, our calculations have always come from normal distributions. Well, sometimes we get a distribution that's not normal. So if the population is not normal, our sample size, n, if it's greater than or equal to 30, uh, then the central limit theorem lets us conclude that the sample means will also we're going to be approximately normal. Okay, so um, so the central limit theorem goes like this. Okay, so if uh, sample sizes of n where n is greater than or equal th to 30, um, uh, if samples and that's plural, you guys, samples of size n where n is greater than or equal to 30 are drawn from any population with an any population normal or non-normal okay with a mean mu and standard deviation um, uh, sigma uh, then the sampling distribution of the sample means and that's a tongue twister the sampling distribution of all the sample means are going to be approximately normal the greater the sample size the better the approximation so here I asked my students yesterday is this a normal distribution well no it's not a nice normal bell-shaped curve but what happens is if we took sample sizes, if as long as they were greater than or equal to 30, then the, the means of our sample sizes, and they always have to be greater than or equal to 30, the same size, okay, what it does is it normalizes our population right there, okay? And then so uh, what we can, uh, we'll use that, and uh, the distribution of sample means has this, the same mean as the population mean but its standard deviation is going to be less than the standard deviation of the population. Look, here's the standard deviation of this non-normal population. Well, as soon as we start taking sample sizes that's greater than or equal to 30, it's going to normalize our samples, okay? And it makes our, our sample standard deviation much smaller than the standard deviation that you might get over here. Okay, so this tells us that the distribution of sample means has the same center as the population, so the mean is equal to the, the sample means right here, okay? But it's not all spread out like it is over here, okay? Moreover, the distribution of sample means it becomes less and less spread out or a tighter concentration as your sample sizes increase. So if we did, uh, you know, uh, sample sizes of 50, it would be less spread out. It would be a more tighter um, bell-shaped curve uh, than one of 30, okay? So the bigger population sizes you can do, um, the more um, accurate you can make your 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 probability predictions right there. Okay, sometimes it's it's not feasible to do big uh, populations. Uh, you just don't have enough time. But as long as it's greater than or equal to 30, you don't care if it's normal because it will be normal uh, using this formula here. So anyways, if the population itself is already normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of sample means is normally distributed for any sample size. So it doesn't have to be greater than or equal to 30 if the population is already normal. So look in the problem as you're going. If it says it's a normal population, then you don't care about the sample sizes. Uh, they're also going to be normal. Uh, but if it's not normal, or if you don't see the word normal in it, you guys, your sample sizes have to be greater than or equal to 30. Otherwise, the central limit theorem won't allow that to happen. Okay, so uh, here's a normal uh, population right here. And then so as soon as we start picking sample sizes from this normal population, okay, it just, it just decreases our standard deviation. It makes it smaller as soon as we start picking sample sizes, okay? All right, so let's try something here, you guys. So in either case, the sampling distribution of sample means has a mean equal to the population mean, okay? Our sample mean is the same as the population mean right there, always, okay? All right, so that's what that says. The sample means is the same as the population means, okay? And um, uh, the sampling distribution of sample means has a variance that's equal to one over n times the variance of the population um, and uh, the, the, uh, the standard deviation, we're going to use that part, the standard deviation, is equal to the, uh, the square root of that, okay? And you're thinking, what does that mean? Well, it's this right here, okay? Here's the variance, okay? It's that sigma squared, so the, this is the, the sample variance of my, uh, my numbers that we're talking about. It equals the population variance 
uh, divided by the square root of, of your sample size, okay? And so we want this right here. Our standard deviation is equal to the population standard deviation. This is the sample standard deviations equals the population standard deviations divided by the square root of n, okay? And the standard deviation of the sampling distributions uh, is called the standard error of the mean. So it's going to ask you to find the standard error of the mean. So we're going to find that right there. Okay, so here we go. So cell phone bills for residents uh, of a city have a mean of 63 bucks and a standard deviation of 11 bucks, $11. Okay, a buck is a dollar. I had a student ask me who transferred over from another country. She didn't know what a buck was, so I thought that was cute. Um, uh, and anyways, as shown in this graph below, okay, can you see this is not a normal graph right there. So, random samples of 100, okay, so look, that's greater than or equal to 30, so we can normalize it, of cellular phone bills are drawn from this population, and the mean of each sample is determined. Find the mean and standard error, okay, so that's the standard error, that's the, the sample standard deviation. Uh, of the mean and the sampling distribution, and then we'll sketch a graph of that sample. Always sketch a graph of the sampling distribution and the sample means. Okay, all right, I know you're still kind of up in the air about this. I think it'll start unwinding. Okay, so the sample means always equals the population mean. So in this case, um, it's $63. Okay, so the sample mean is equal to 63 bucks. Okay, and then the sample's uh, standard deviation is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, so the population standard deviation is 11 and the square root of n, which is 100 right there. Okay, so here we go. So our uh, sample mean is equal to the population mean of 63, and then we plug it in to get our sample standard deviation, 11 divided by 10, because the square root of 100 is 10, is 1.1. Since we're talking about dollars, that's $1.10, okay? So let's interpret that, okay? So from the uh, central limit theorem, because the sample size is greater than 30, the sampling distribution can be approximately normal uh, by a normal distribution with a mean of 63 bucks and um, a, a standard error or sample or standard deviation of 110 bucks, all right? So let's go, let's think about that there, you guys, okay? So um, uh, here's the mean of 63 bucks and, and it, if I'd have had time, I would have marked off three standard deviations. Three standard deviations is what? Three thirty, three dollars and thirty cents. So sixty-three minus three thirty. What's that? Like fifty-seven. So this would be like fifty-seven, right here. Okay. And then sixty-three plus three thirty would be about sixty-six. So that would be right there. And so, um, and then just draw a bell-shaped curve right there between that. Okay. Always do that. Always draw a bell-shaped curve. Okay. Here's another one. Suppose uh, the training heart rates of all 20-year-old athletes are, and then the key word is, these are normally distributed, okay? And there's a normal bell-shaped curve. So it's really important that you recognize it says normal. It has a mean of 135 beats per minute and a standard deviation of 18 beats per minute, okay? So 18 beats, so if we took off uh, 135 minus 18 times 3, so that would be, what's that, 54? It'd be over here somewhere, okay? All right, so uh, random samples of size 4. Okay, that's okay because it's uh, it says it's normal, so they could be less than 30 are drawn from this population. Okay, and so if it's, um, uh, if it's a normal distribution, then any samples that we pick is also going to be normal. If it's not normal or if it doesn't state it's normal, then our sample sizes have to be greater than or equal to 30. All right, but this says it's normal. So random samples of size 4 are going to be drawn from this population, and the mean of each sample is determined. Find the mean and the standard error, which is a sample standard deviation, and the mean of the sampling distribution, okay? Then sketch a graph of the sampling distribution. All right, well, now when we do the sample sizes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to decrease this um, uh, standard deviation. So as soon as you start picking sample sizes that's, um, you know, any sample size is going to decrease the standard deviation and make it tighter. All right, so anyways, the sample mean equals the population mean, which is 135 beats per minute right there, and the sample standard deviation is the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n, okay, which is 18 divided by the square root of 4, which is 2, so 18 divided by 2 is 9 beats per minute. So look, the sample standard deviation is cut in half. 
when you start doing sample. And so the more you increase my sample sizes, the more it's going to decrease my sample standard deviations. Okay? So from the central limit theorem, because this population is normally distributed, the sample distributions of the sample means will also be normally distributed. All right? And there's our there's our graph right there. Okay? So um, so uh, distribution of sample means with n is equal to four. Okay, so if n equals four, then three standard deviations would be minus. Um, uh, uh, well, I'm sorry, three standard deviations is uh, uh, 36. So 35 minus 36 would be uh, down here in the what about 99ish or something. And so 35 plus uh, 36 would be up here so three standard deviations to the left and to the right and I would think it would be better to go minus nine minus nine minus nine and then plus nine plus nine plus nine I think if I had time I would have, I would have drawn those graphs a little bit better okay and then look here's the original population even with the sample sizes that's only that's as big as four it becomes a tighter distribution right there all right you guys if you are in my class I'm gonna have you do the Try it yourself, two and three on pages 264 and 265. Take care.